seems like I have forgotten to do my hair again. This is just a short announcement to tell you that we are a bit delayed in editing the films. I have simply too much to do and this is just to give you something. The latest improvement has been adding a bungee cord to my rifle, which lets me very quickly secure the rifle and have both hands free for working the cameras. So this has been extremely useful. So it doesn't look too good, but uh, it works. Now another improvement I need to do is <laughs> get a second scope because uh, the mount here, ah, there was something wrong with it. So I had to more or less permanently glue the scope to the rifle, which means I can't use the 6.5 by 57R, which is the cartridge I want to use in my kit valve. Enough with that, let's just give you some stuff. This episode contains sponsored items. Before you go, subscribe, like, and comment. Click the bell if you want notifications of new episodes. I really love these boots, but they are getting a bit slippery, so it's uh, time to replace them with something better. Now this is the fifth pair I've had of these boots, and it's always the sole that wears out before the leather. So very happy with quality. And voila, a new pair of the same brand. But they are not perfect. So I always replace the laces with these 150 Scarpas. Now these laces don't slip. And that means the boot will stay on your foot exactly as you want it. So this is one of those small things that can make a big difference. Now, when you consider that slipping and falling is one of the major reasons for injuries in the outdoors, you should put some effort into it. Now, to speak more gear, barrel braking is one of the more common questions I get. How do you do it? So these are my new barrels, and I'll show you exactly how we do it. So I have two cleaning rods, one with a bronze brush, and one with the felt patches. All my barrels are the same, 6.555. I cut them at 50 centimeters and I thread them for a silencer. Now it appears that the gunsmith have measured 50 from the end of the chamber and not barrel overall length, which I use. No big deal. My barrels are now 58 instead of 50. So this is simply a bronze brush with oil About 15 times perhaps, plenty of oil. And the only reason why I'm doing this is to remove any residue in the barrel. It has nothing to do with precision or removing tool marks or whatever theory you prescribe to. So after I've done that, I just put some felt brushes through it. And I don't clean the barrel squeaky clean, I just want it clean enough. But there's always an element of superstition. If you are a hunter, you also add some rock. And for animals not to see you, you just sprinkle it. So the chronographing I'm doing now is basically just to give myself an idea what each individual barrel will do in terms of Well, that was an excellent demonstration that you really need to pay attention to details. I didn't fix the silencer properly. Now, nothing appears to be damaged. Three shots with my dying barrel just to see what that does and I'm not sure how many shots I have through this one but it's a lot it's you know crates on crates so that was 861 and these days I use more or less exclusively the 120 grain bullets and that is just an adaptation to the copper bullets I'm going to get more or less the same velocity and very similar trajectories for all hunting distances so that should be me for the next four years and when I look at these barrels 
holistic calculator, we see that for all practical purposes, there are no difference between them. They're all going to do the same, behave the same, so you can keep your actions the same. And unless something happens on paper in terms of precision, it won't. There's going to be absolutely no difference between these barrels, and you can just keep on shooting using the same procedure and the same rules and have the same impact. Subscribe to the THLR channel by clicking the left logo icon so you'll be shooting straighter than a drunk skunk before the sun shines over northern Norway.